Hi, so I thought I'd just take a liberty and tell you a bit about my research and how it connects to compilers, starting right from what we've just heard about in the introductory lecture for this course. So this lecture is absolutely not examinable, but I hope you might find it interesting and it's just an introduction. I just wanted to kick off with this thought. Um, compiling is like skiing. So this, I don't know if you've ever been skiing, no particular reason why you should have done or how it will help in understanding compilers, but you can imagine that there's a great big mountain here, this is actually the Matterhorn, and there are ski lifts that take you some of the way up this mountain, and the higher you get, the more fun you can have skiing down the mountain. Of course, if the ski lifts were not here, then you would have to carry your skis trudging up this mountain. And that sounds like really, really hard work. So the analogy with compiling is this. A compiler has two halves. It has an analysis half and a synthesis half. The analysis half begins with stuff that you'll cover in this course, like syntax analysis and semantic analysis to derive the types of objects in the program. And then data flow analysis we'll cover in, in, in the lecture course as well. Points to analysis, we might touch upon that little, a little bit. It's the kind of analysis where you try and figure out which um, objects in the heap might be pointed at by the pointers in a program. You might try and discover the class hierarchy. You might discover the call graph, which functions call which functions. You might try and discover dependence relationships. Is there a dependence between these two separate lines of code or could they in fact run in parallel with each other or something like that? There are more sophisticated analyses like shape analysis where you try and not just discover what your, whether your pointers might point to the same thing, but what shape the data structures might have. Could this linked list possibly be cyclic, for example, might be a property your compiler could try and discover. Um, polyhedral analysis is a step beyond that, where you try and characterize the dependent structure of your program in a compact and geometric way. All of this stuff all of this stuff is really hard work and some of it is built upon beautiful theory that you might appreciate but in the end it can feel a bit like trudging up the mountain carrying your skis when you should be taking a ski lift in order to get higher quicker of course when you get to the top you can synthesize you can generate code and there are all sorts of code generation options that you might consider here. And the point is that the higher you start, the more flexibility you have in what code you might generate. So if we start from a higher level programming language, we might hope to be able to do more and better analysis and start from somewhat higher up the mountain, perhaps even a very high level language, could get you all the way beyond where the ski lifts could possibly get you, get you beyond what static analysis can give you as a consequence of capturing properties of the application or, the la or, or very high level language properties. So my research is about taking this to the limit, taking a helicopter to the top of the mountain and skiing all the way down that glacier right from the peak. So the idea here is that when you're compiling a conventional programming language, what you're doing is you're working with an implementation of an abstract idea, perhaps an abstract numerical method or an abstract algorithmic concept. If we can capture that abstract numerical method or algorithmic concept in a more, in the language or embedded in the language so the compiler knows about the kinds of things you're going to be doing then the compiler can understand and generate higher level and generate code from a much larger space of possible code synthesis part of pathways basically you get more more exciting faster 
and more diverse ways down the mountain by taking a helicopter to the top and sidestepping the boring part of the journey where you do all of that analysis which to tell you the truth very frequently fails to really uncover what programs are actually doing. So that's my research. If you're interested, go read my website, my research papers, go look me up on Google Scholar. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I've learned here is that the story I've just told you, take a helicopter to the top, isn't quite the whole story. And really the art of what I would call compiler architecture is, it, is precisely to do with that intermediate representation concept. It's to do with choosing, designing, selecting suitable representations of the application code, ideally as abstract and high level as you can possibly get, and then mapping from such high level representations to a sequence of lower level representations the point being that you want to do optimizations, and some of those optimizations are only really possible at the low level where you've exposed low level issues, but some of them are enormously easier if you do them at the high level. So um, the concrete example of this from my own research, we've got a few examples, but the best example is a domain specific language called FireDrake, which automates a family of numerical methods called the finite element method for solving partial differential equations. Partial differential equations are used to model things like fluid flow or how structures bend and deform. And there's a standard recipe and a rich language for talking about this family of numerical approaches. What we've done is we've been working with a domain specific language where you basically type in the differential equation. You specify how it is to be discretized in a finite way. And the compiler looks after everything from there. So it maps it from the, high, from the domain specific language to a notation called tensor contractions. Um, <clears throat> then from there to a polyhedral representation. And from there to a parallel loop representation and so on. And at each of those levels, we're able to do optimizations, which um, are enormously easier if you do them at the right level. And, and um, what we've learned in building these, this compiler and in rebuilding it, re-engineering and refactoring it, is finding the right place to do each of these optimizations. So if you find that interesting, Go look at my research talks, my research groups, um, talks and videos and slides um, website is here. Enjoy and ask me questions about it. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you soon.